giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello and welcome to FTC Recap. We have split up today's show into three segments. We will first be covering the North region, then highlight some competition from the South region, and then finish off the show with an audience pre-selected top 25. Reporting for FTC Recap, I'm Ashray. If you have any questions that you would like to be read during the show, please tag at First Updates Now and type your questions into the chat. We also have some new hosts that you'll see on this recap and on the Houston Recap, so please welcome our new team members to the show. I'm Ishan. I'm Ritish. I'm Jack. Before we get into the recap, we wanted to show everyone the map that we will be using to break up the recap. The first segment will be the Detroit recap, covering all the blue regions of the map. At 8.15, we will have the Houston recap, which will cover all the green regions on the map. And at 9 p.m. EST, we will also have the FTC Top 25 show, where all the teams that you voted for to be the Top 25 in FTC Skystone will be announced. And we also have a giveaway. Tyler, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, giveaway tonight, guys. Uh, from Go Build a, uh, of course, they're going to be doing a lot of giveaways, I think, during the season. I just had that feeling, by the way. Uh, but Go Build a, uh, is going to be uh, between our shows tonight. So after this show gets done, um, we're actually, we'll start the giveaway. So make sure you stick around till then. We'll draw before the next show starts. Uh, and then same thing between uh, the Houston uh, recap and uh, FTC Top 25. But $50 Go Build a gift certificate could be yours if you're interested. All you have to do, by the way, is click that little follow button near the top of the screen or if you're on your phone. For some reason, you can do it on there too, uh, and you ha will have to type in a keyword uh, in between our shows. Uh, we'll come on live. By the way, this will be a little bit. If you're watching on YouTube, this will be a little bit different for you. But uh, we'll come on live during these uh, during the breaks and go through that. Uh, if you would like five times luck, go ahead and subscribe. You can do so for free through Twitch Prime or for just a few bucks a month. Help fund stay loud, live, and independent, and get a whole bunch of subscriber benefits, including full length videos, uh, uh, audio podcasts, and a exclusive uh, Discord room just for you. Uh, so we'll uh, be drawing for that giveaway after the end of this segment awesome let's go ahead and hop right into the north region which has been packed with qualifier meets and even some state championship starting out we're going to look at maryland and dc there have been six qualifiers held in the maryland dc region with some impressive high scores this region has open borders so we've seen a lot of teams from ohio pennsylvania and virginia compete here Starting out, we're going to talk a little bit about the Baltimore City 2 qualifier, where some notable teams were Team 7182 Mechanical Paradox. They were the finalist alliance. Uh, they were part of the finalist alliance last year at the Detroit World Championship. Team number seven, the Tactical Chief. Team 11215, Checksum. And those two teams are both from the TechRick organization. We also have Team 7393, the Electron Volts. Team number seven ended up being the number one seed, and they picked their sister team, Team 11215. You can see the, their final match again um, on the screen right now. And team uh, the second alliance was comprised of Team 5014, No Johns, and the Electron Volts. The number third seed alliance, which was captained by Rover Revenge, picked Mechanical Paradox. And eventually they lost in the semifinals, um, being beat out by No Johns and Electron Volts. In a very close finals match, the Electron Volts auto was key in winning and helping the Blue Alliance win the entire uh, championship. One thing to note uh, is a lot of teams were looking at Electron uh, Mechanical Paradox, and they said that they were expecting more. Uh, when I talked to Mechanical Paradox at the competition, they said that they had run out of time to build their final. So they were really just building a simple claw robot in order to have something to compete with at this competition. And I'm completely expecting them to have a much more competitive robot as we go later on into the competition. 
Next up, we're going to talk about the Mountain Maryland qualifier, which happened this past Saturday. Um, and a lot of out-of-state teams came to this one because it was um, at the westmost point in Maryland, so it's very close to Ohio. Uh, two of the big teams there were Quantum Leap and the Bionic Tigers, uh, who have both been to the World Championship multiple times. And in the first qualification match that they played together, they set a high score of 105 points. Um, and Quantum Leap, took the number one seed, and they ended up picking extreme voltage and loading. And they went up against a tough number three in the finals, which was comprised of AlphaGo, a Virginia team, Digital Devils, which was a rookie team, and the Centennial Circuiteers. Third finals match is playing right now. And actually, in this final match, the difference was determined by one stone in the skyscraper. Um, and in the end, the Red Alliance won, advancing Quantum Leap to the Maryland State Championship. At the Annapolis 2 qualifier, many Maryland teams, uh, powerhouse teams were there, including Cubics Cubed, uh, FTC 8221, the Flamangos, and Wizards.exe. The two strongest stackers at the event were Cubics and Wizards, and Cubics won the qualification match where they played each other, earning them the number one seed and giving the number two seed to Wizards.exe. Cubics ended up picking Wizards.exe and Checksum to form the number one seed. Newt.exe, Wizards.exe's sister team, captained the number two alliance, but ended up losing in the semifinals. The number three alliance comprised of Robocraft, Exponential, and Virus played two hard final matches, but was not able to beat the number one alliance, which swept the finals and got a Maryland high score of 115 points. Anything interests you about the Maryland region for you guys? I think it's cool we got to see uh, Quantum Leap again. They participated at the Christiansburg Qualifier in Virginia, advanced from there, and then I believe they've already advanced from their home state of Ohio. So they're going to three state tournaments, which I'm pretty sure is the most anyone can do. So that's really cool seeing some teams really cross borders and, uh, and really get their feet wet. Yeah. Um, I was talking to them, actually. I was at that qualifier, and um, in talking to them, they are going to all three state championships, and that's really crazy. They have a really amazing robot. Uh, and as you might have seen in that match, that was the finals two match. Um, throughout the finals, their robot actually had um, something that was scraping the ground. So during the finals, they had to repeat some matches because they would sometimes ta- uh, scrape the tape off of the ground. And <laughs> as soon as that happened, the referees would call like a, a rematch and they'd just start the match over again. So that happened a few times, sometimes in our favor, sometimes in their favor. So Yeah, I think... I think overall, there are just a lot of really great teams in Maryland, and I'm really um, curious to see what uh, where everything ends up going. Yeah, and I I played with uh, Cubics Cube this past weekend on Sunday at the Annapolis Two, and um, it was they're they're really good. So seeing all the teams like I'm expecting Mechanical Paradox to be strong like they were last year, Cubics Cubed, uh, Wizards at Exe, and there's a lot of other strong teams that are working their way up in Maryland. So I'm expecting to see a pretty strong showing at the state championship. Yeah. All right, now we're going to switch over to the Massachusetts region where we've seen a few exciting events. On December 9th, team 14079 Attic Fanatics took home the one of the first winning Alliance trophies in the state, paired with Team 4029, Two Bits and a Bite. Nearly one month later, 4029 welcomed teams into Lexington High School for two back-to-back qualifiers on the first Saturday and second sat- and first Saturday and Sunday of January. At the Battle of Lexington, Team 14039, Irrational, was the star of the show with an incredible eight stack. They paired up with Team 14875, Lightspeed for Eliminations, who supplied supplemented the strong stacker with world-class driving skills and this dynamic duo took the event by storm one of the elimination in one of one elimination match lightspeed accidentally stole a block out of their opposing alliance robot and all they had to say was i didn't know our intake was that good Uh, (laughs) so they they were pretty hot that entire time um the next day um on the sunday of that qualifier team 8644 the brainstormers um who's been a legendary team for such a long time in the FTC community, won the Battle of Lexington, the Sunday day for the Battle of Lexington, in a row, and earned a state to the Massachusetts State Championship. This year, they paired up with Team 12897, Newton's Law of Mass, um, whose very, very good odometry system gave them two Sky Stones every match. Like, they never missed. Um, 
they were very high up in the rankings because of that auto. And I think that's something that we're going to see over and over and over again. In the finals, uh, they played sister team 5273 Arc Thunder and team 4410 Arc Lightning, who have been practicing together for months. And like in this game, collaboration is so important. So that practice, I thought, would have been a big contributing factor. But unfortunately, Team 5273, Arc Thunder couldn't pull out the win. But they still uh, qualified for the state championship through the Inspire Award. Um, one of the things to note is we did not have any match videos of uh, Massachusetts. So if you do want us to fully cover your region, make sure that they're live streaming and uploading to the Orange Alliance. That way we can get their data and include it in our recaps. Yes, yeah, one thing I just want to mention with that as well, too, is I know uh, somebody put in that, like, oh, my event was streamed, but there's nobody on demand. It is literally one click to do on Twitch uh, to do that. Uh, so let them know about it because clearly, you know, it's great that more events are streamed, but uh, please pressure your events to do that. We need those videos uh, so we can do it good justice uh, on these recaps. And so you can see them later as well, too. Yeah, and if you have any videos to share, join our Discord and share them in our Discord. That way we can use them for the shows. And it's something that we use as a resource in order to help create these shows. So any thoughts on Massachusetts? I mean, top teams, 4042, uh, two bits and a bite, Smith and Powerhouse, Team 8644, also a powerhouse. Uh, what are your opinions on them? If, if I remember correctly, I, I saw, so Massachusetts, they don't release video, but they've uh, released the results of the competition awards and won on advancement. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure in the first qualifier that two bits and a bite, two bits and a bite participated in, they did not advance, but they were the next three advancement slots. I think they were like Inspire, sec uh, maybe like Inspire second or third, Winning Alliance first pick, and like Think Award winner. And it was just, Try it, it, it's really unfortunate to like, yeah. I'd hate, feel for them for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think something that's recurring in a lot of states is, especially a lot of states are trying to expand the number of qualifiers, which means that they have to have less spots for qualifiers. I know this has yeah. definitely been a problem in Maryland. <laughs> so only two to three teams advance from each qualifier, which means mm -hmm. even if you're on the winning alliance, you're not going to advance. It's like you have to be a captain in order to advance and it's yeah. become a bit of a problem in ftc in my opinion yeah that happened to, that happened to us uh last weekend when we were at the um mountain maryland qualifier uh we were the winning lines first pick and inspire third but we were one slot away from advancing twice which was disappointing <laughs> Yeah, and, and even looking at Massachusetts, definitely one of the, uh, with some powerhouse teams, it'll really be interesting to see how these uh, autonomouses develop as they're already quite strong. And um, mm -hmm. it'll be curious to see what happens at the state championship and even at, uh, at even at Worlds. Yeah, you see already autonomouses are score are really high scoring, especially in term in comparison to like, you know, just stacking a few stones in Italia. Um, you know that autonomous, there's some teams out there that, you know, like 8802, and some other videos you've seen that teams are already doing stacking like three or four stones in autonomous itself, uh, which is really crazy. Um, so as you've seen, you know, those high autonomous scores do give you a huge head start this year uh, going into the tally up. Yep. And we'll see a little bit of those teams as we go on with the region recap. So let's go mm -hmm. ahead and take a look at and West Virginia, Jack. All right, so West Virginia. Uh, West Virginia was one of the first state tournaments uh, held, and especially definitely in the North region. And so, uh, yeah, they're held first weekend in December, and they advance one team to the Detroit World Championship. In the past, uh, West Virginia has advanced two teams, which had a pretty cool effect in that a bunch of really good robot robot based you know, robot focused teams uh, from all around the North region, like all over the place would go to West Virginia. And so it led to some really cool, uh, really cool competition with like last year, you had nuts and bolts, crack and pinion, power stackers, I believe, supposable thumbs. Uh, and so it led to some really, really cool matches with interesting dynamics because only the captain would advance. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, they changed that. Only one team advances, and that's the Inspire Award winner. So we didn't see as much competitive play as we have in the past, but it still was really good, as a lot of really good teams who are Inspire Award candidates are also really great robot teams. Uh, so an interesting thing about West Virginia State Tournament is it had 20 uh, participants, 20 participating teams, of which 
only 12 were actually from West Virginia. And I believe like the lowest number was like the 14,000s, which means like all these teams were really new. Um, so that's just kind of an interesting, interesting element. Uh, so we got to see a first, uh, first pick, uh, first pick, excuse me, at Team 8417 Electric Legends out of Kentucky, uh, who had a fantastic robot last year. They were the first pick of the second seed alliance in the Ochoa division. And like fantastic robot. Uh, they had more of a uh, more of a mover, stone mover bot uh, than a stacker. Um, so it was interesting seeing them uh, participate. I think they ended up being ranked number two after qualification matches. Uh, Interestingly enough, the qual- the tournament was won by the number four seed alliance, uh, made up of uh, Captain 8711, the gas attendants from Indiana, and Team 8297 geared up from Virginia. Uh, 8297 had participated in a couple of other competitions in Virginia and had done very, very well there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things you can see looking at this uh, looking at this autonom- uh, clip at the end of Autonomous, you know, uh, number four seed alliance starts with a twenty point advantage, and that just kind of sus- uh, sustains them the entire match. And so, it just really goes to show uh, the impact of autonomous. Uh, so, speaking of the Inspire Award, the team who won it was Team Eleven Three Six Two M Cube from Narrows, Virginia. So, I believe that makes them the first official team going to the Detroit Championship. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're the first. Uh, so, congratulations to them. Uh, so I think we'll move on to Virginia. Uh, Virginia has held several qualifiers so far. Uh, they're, like Maryland, are an open state, so we get teams from all over the place. Uh, one of the more exciting qualifiers, especially early on, was the Christiansburg qualifier. Uh, we got to see first appearances of teams who have been very successful in the past, like 8393, the giant Dyncephalic Robotics team, 9794, Wizards.exe. Uh, and 9872 informal logic. So uh, while many strong teams came to compete, the team with the highest OPR and winning alliance captain was team 16439 AlphaGo from Ashburn, Virginia, a rookie team. Mm-hmm. This elimination team was awesome. The number four seed alliance almost upset the number one. The number four seed alliance had 8393, and the finals matches were just absolutely just so exciting. I know, Ishan, you were competing there, uh, so that must have been super cool. Like I said, it's really, really competitive. You can see in the in the background of the clip we have up on the screen, uh, 9872 and 9794 again, kind of a kind of a fist fight back there. Um, so it, I, to me, I think it's really cool. It highlights the the defensive aspect that's Skystone is going to bring. As you start getting these more competitive teams, as you start getting closer and more uh, stressful matches, how are you? How is that going to uh, affect uh, you know the defense in the quarry area? So it was super cool. Yeah. Um, so like being at that competition, uh, I mean, we saw the top four teams that going into it, we expected it to be Informal Logic, ninety seven ninety four Wizards uh Big Brain Stem, and Small Brain Stem. But it ended up being the team that could do autonomous best. Uh, uh-huh. Alpha, that took the number one seed. And I think that's a repeating pattern that we're going to see throughout the entire season. Unless you're consistent in auto, you're not going to be the top ranks because auto is how you win matches, but teleops how you win finals. And the reason why um, we won this match, even though we knocked over our tower, was because of our auto score. Uh, we won this match by four points. Um, and it was all because of our perfect 40-point auto. So just something to take into account. A lot of fun at this competition. Driving here was one of the best things ever. <laughs> and, and I think other than just the auto, it's really how consistent that auto is, as you really have to be able to replicate that auto time after time. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Another thing I really want to highlight in this match specifically um, is the defense that 97-94 played. I thought that was really, really well played. And... Again, and this year especially, defense is a huge thing because of that. Because of the fact that the depot's in the opposite corner from your foundation, so it really draws a lot of um, tension in that loading zone where teams are like going across each other. So I think that's another thing that is a huge deal breaker. Um, defense, especially, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so defense absolutely a huge aspect. And I know it's one of the things that seemed to sink eighty three ninety three was of. A really awesome and ambitious auto that had some issues with consistency, um, but uh, like I think tell during Teleop they were one of the better teams, uh, if not the best team there. Um, so you're right, yeah, Ashan. You know, t- t- uh, auto can 
really hurt you if you don't have it working. Uh, but you need to have Telly up to, to really take it home. Uh, yeah. So the teams who succeeded, uh, <laughs> I guess succeeded most. Uh, so the winning lines captain was AlphaGo with first pick, Team 97-94, and second pick, Team 69-31, the substantial monocephalic brainstem robotics team. Uh, all three of those teams advanced, Wizards also being the winning alliance captain. And so, uh, yeah. We were so the Inspire was... Award winners. Sorry, did no. I say winning alliance captain? Yeah, we were Sorry. Inspire Award. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. You guys, are... yeah. Uh, so, congratulations. Uh, so, the following weekend was the uh, Newport News qualifier, where a Virginia high score of 100 was set due mainly to the efforts of Team 4634, Frogbots Purple. Frogbots would go on to win the Inspire Award and captain the winning alliance with their sister team, Team 17160, Frogbots Green. And Team 15167, the Robo Troopers. Uh, my team competed at this competition, and we got to talk with Frogbots and some of the really cool things they had in their autonomous pro- uh, autonomous process. They use a lot of teams use odometry. They just use a series of ultrasonic sensors to track where they're going, which I thought was really unique and cool. Uh, and then, and yeah, and their their lift system was really nice, and their intake was super super fast. Uh, I feel like their their style of robot is pretty close to the to as close to the meta as you're going to see. Um, mm-hmm. I think the fast intake, linear slide, lift, and then the like linear uh, then like the linear slide outtake. Now we've seen a lot of four bar outtakes as well, uh, so I think you know teams have a lot of variation in that regard. Um, but generally, you see you see a lot of s- similar designs, which are sh- proving to be really really effective. Um, so that same weekend, uh, the following day, was the Centerville qualifier, uh, and we saw a second play of Team 12096 Absolute Zero and Team 14607 Robot Uprising. Uh, while both of those teams particularly particip- uh, did a fantastic job, they did not end up being the winning alliance captain. Uh, unfortunately... Team 14607, who had a great showing at the Oakton qualifier and a great showing here, uh, did not end up advancing uh, to Virginia States, and there was no way for them to get another qualifier. So I believe they're competing in Maryland now. Uh, so, of course, we wish the best of luck to them. Uh, yeah. And so this is another a competition we got to see AlphaGo, who was just proving to be a really, really solid team. Uh, and uh, really pi- showing how the simple claw bot, you know, the simple, effective, consistent claw bot could really, really win in Skystone. Uh, so a couple of weekends ago, we had the Charlottesville qualifier featuring the resurgence of Team 8221 Cubics Cube. That's, I think it was like a weekend or two before the competition in Maryland. Uh, they would go on to partner with Team 11112, the Robo Lords, and 16129 Infinite Overload to win the competition. Cubics Cubes was also the Inspire Award winner. Uh, so Cubics, really, really nice robot. Uh, a little bit of autonomous inconsistency, but all in all, they really just had a machine that worked. Uh, and it Interesting thing about the dynamic between 8221 and 1112 was that where, a lot, where some alliances are built to have one bot stack and one bot feed, this alliance had two fantastic bots who could do both. So they would just build two different towers. And that's to me, that's kind of interesting. I honestly thought the teams would be collaborating to build one tower but i can absolutely see where like it that could get really really tricky uh with collision and if you don't have it synchronized just right there could be some problems um but so all in all really great showing by both of those teams uh and we look forward to seeing uh, more of both of them in the future yeah and another thing i want to point out really quick is the power of having a sister team or like a, another team to work with <laughs> um even right here in this qualifier you see one 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 two and sixteen one two nine. Um, 16129 is actually their rookie team or their sister team. And that dynamic that they had together was crazy. We saw that back in the uh, Oakton qualifier too, that they were working together and they also did really well there too. Um, and you see that dynamic duo playing over and over again. 4634 picked their sister team um, at the Charlottesville qualifier. Um, so again, that whole sister team dynamic, I think that is something that's really coming uh, to play in the season. What do you guys think? I, I certainly agree. I would, though, beg the question of, does that seem, I don't want to say fair, but, you know, when having a sister team, having the resources to have two teams who practice together and, desi- and you know, in some cases, design their robots around each other, do you think that gives, you know, 
more capable programs an advantage over uh, over others. Oh, I think I think it definitely does. It having a second team to work to practice with gives you that practice of dealing with defense. Uh, it also gives you an opportunity to practice just stacking while another team delivers you stones, or just delivering stones while another team stacks your stones, and then also working with them to you know get around the foundation and the end game and stuff like that. So it gives you a lot of good practice. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. there's only one qualifier left in Virginia, and that's going to be the Orange Choir qualifier. We will get to see uh, Frogbots again, 7182 Mechanical Paradox, and 8645 the Robotic Doges. So Virginia is looking to be super exciting, super competitive, and that state competition is going to be nuts. Oh, yeah. And next up, we have New Jersey. New Jersey has notoriously had some big name teams such as Land Bros, and this year is no different with tough competition building up. New Jersey has so far held five qualifying events. The first qualifier was the Southern uh, Scuffle that took place in mid-November. 71-49 Enforces showed some strong gameplay early in the season with their claw and lift system. Uh, They showed how efficient communication and driver practice can lead to success with a simple claw and lift. Congrats to 71-49, the Enforcers. uh, 14-860, I swear it worked last night. I love that name, by the way. And... (laughs) 14020 uh, for advancing to the state competition really early in the season. Uh, then we there were three more qualifiers that took place mainly in December, including the Robo Tussle, uh, Robo Just, and Robo Ruckus qualifier. In the Robo Tussle qualifier, uh, congrats to Team 4347, Nano Gurus, uh, 7026, J Droids, and 12538, Eborg Robotics, which is the video that we're seeing right now. Uh, from the Robo Just Qualifier, congrats to teams 3415 Lancers, 11180 Break and Bolts, and uh, 13103 Ironman Robotics, 16953 Fire. And from the Robo Ruckus Qualifier, um, congrats to teams uh, 30, uh, 7350 What's Next, 11697 Tectonic, uh, 12601 Robo Storm, and 14058 Flexagons. So all these teams will be advancing to the NJ State competition later in March that we'll be seeing. Um, And one of the most exciting qualifiers at the Liberty Science Center took place about just a week and a half ago. Uh, At this competition, we saw some very, very high scores, including a high score of 122 without penalties. Uh, 98-89 Cruise Control displayed their competitiveness uh, throughout the day as they were the winning alliance captain and the number one seed. Their alliances included uh, 11253 Rumblebots and 13649 Roboblazers. Moreover, Cruise Control was even able to do a stack of 10. Um, A lot of their strategy was used uh, as the winning alliance decided not even to run their partners autonomous with the fear that they might collide uh, and decided to sacrifice the five points for parking. Uh, Overall, this is really an exciting qualifier to watch. And congrats to 9889 Cruise Control, um, 136... 49 Robo Blazers for being the winning Alliance Partner 1, 163, 67 Krypton Warriors for the Inspire 3 award winner, and uh, 17009 Steel Mongolias for the Inspire 2 award winner, um, all advancing to states. As one of the states with more teams, there are already 18 teams registered for the state competition on March 15th, where nine teams will advance to the Detroit World Championship. Um, with so many teams competing in NJ, there are still three more qualifiers to come before the league tournament and finally the New Jersey State Championships. There are truly some amazing teams shaping up in New Jersey as usual, and as the state competitions get closer, more and more teams are looking really competitive. Uh, moving to New York, we have already seen many competitive teams with multiple qualifiers that have taken place. In November, we had the first qualifier, the Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics Center qualifier. Even as an early qualifier, matches went into the 80s. At this event, congratulations to the winning alliance, 80-88 team, Cyphalopods, uh, hard name, 9371 General Relativity, and 9384 Hydraulic Hydras. And the first Inspire Award winner went to 8365 Gear Masters. Um, then we had the John Dewey High School Qualifier, where 11943, the Nighthawks, won the first Inspire Award. Uh, Three Ton Stu Fission won the second Inspire Award. And uh, 4174 Atomic Theory won the third Inspire Award. Um, then we had the John Dewey Qualifier uh, 3, 
in this qualifier, congrats to teams uh, 4326 Base Lions for the first Inspire Award, uh, 10539 for the second Inspire Award, 8721 Mighty Mechanics for the third Inspire Award, and the winning alliance consisting of 17126 Natural Selection, 10539 Ultra, and 5361 Lion, Lion Otonics. And just this weekend at the Francis Lewis High School qualifier, um, we saw the winning alliance um, consisting of 4784 Tektronic, Tektricons, 8087 Seahorse Stallions, and 6496 Sep Nerd Herd. Overall, New York is shaping up to be quite competitive as usual, as there are three more qualifiers before the New York State Championships on March 8th. Um, next, moving into Michigan, uh, we have recently seen the Michigan State Championships in Warren and Battle Creek. We saw 146-57 Robo Warriors, 11129 Novi Bodyant, and 14353 The Nerd Bots um, win the Warren State Champions. Uh, in Battle Creek, we saw Team Crash, Enigma Riddlers, and Cybugs win the Battle Creek. Um, and we even saw a lot of strategies that we might even see at Worlds. We had even a high score of 122 at Warren. Teams that coordinated their autons together were much more likely to win the matches here. In the Mary Curie division at Warren, we had two, two powerhouses, sorry, Circuit Breakers and Script Dragons. They both played against each other in their division finals, and the Circuit Breakers lost because of not parking at the end. It was truly a very close match. The Inspire Award winner from Warren were Script Dragons, and the Inspire Award winner from Battle Creek were Jefferson Techno Huskies. Altogether, there were 15 advancement slots from the World Michigans. Uh, and all the teams from Michigan are middle school teams, which is pretty cool. So taking a look at this match that's playing right now, um, we see a lot of the teams in Michigan. Uh, they had a really good robot teams, and we saw a lot of good dynamic between them. Um, and especially since they're middle school teams, that's a really cool uh, thing that plays in. What do you guys think about, you know, middle schoolers versus high schoolers, and especially in Michigan where there's not many high school, there's no high school teams? I think definitely um, for the middle schoolers, it's a great opportunity to explore and really uh, learn throughout their middle school so that they can become even more competitive at the high school level. Yeah. So let's move on to the let's move on to one of the most competitive regions, Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania, so far this season, Pennsylvania has only had three qualifiers, and no non-penalty scores in, in the state have crossed 100, which is kind of crazy to me. Uh, currently, two of the top teams are ranking as 98-72 in form of logic and 72-44 out of the box. Uh, both these teams did amazing at Worlds last year, and I'm expecting similar things uh, again this year. Um, so both of those teams are part of the finalist alliance at the Hatchers qualifier. You heard me right. They're the finalist alliance. Um, and they both placed top two for the Inspire, at, for the Inspire Award. Um, now, there hasn't been too much action in Pennsylvania yet, uh, but we are looking forward to future competitions where we're seeing teams like 11115 Gluten Free, 8393, um, the Giant Giant Cephalic Brainstorm Robotics team, and 7423, the Flaming Phoenix, coming in later in February. Um, so one of the highest scoring matches is playing right now. Um, that's between Informal Logic and Out of the Box, two really, really strong teams that have always been really, really good together. Um, so, yeah, we can take a look at them in action. Yeah, one thing to see there is Out of the Box has such a big intake, they picked up two stones, something that teams need to be careful of because if you pick up two stones and you cross that center line, that's automatically a double major because you're um, holding two loss scoring. So something for teams to watch out for. Another thing is right when you when when you control two stones, it's instantly dinged as a penalty, and you and you know that can get really uh, dangerous sometimes, especially if there's like a cluster of stones and you just ran right in. You could get marked off as a penalty right there and then. So something to be careful of. And this season, we've really seen how big penalties are playing into the match scores as really, in my opinion, they've been higher than um, definitely in the past few seasons. All right. Let's take a look at Illinois. So both Illinois and Iowa are two states that have a lot of league meets and then they have league championships later on in the season. Uh, in Illinois, we see teams like 14614 Electro, 14615 Turbocharged, and 
15, 118, the cog champ. Uh, they're already coming out with some really high OPRs over 50. Uh, Turbocharged ran a few practice matches with another practice robot um, that they had in their um, that they had with them, and just with their practice robot, they scored 127 points, which is real, which is nearly a world re world record, I think. Um, so right here, we're looking at the world record, the former world record match between Electro and Cogchamp at an actual qualifier. Uh, this is the Illinois state record. Um, and it was a really great dynamic play between the two teams. So yeah, you guys got anything to add to it? Yeah, no, Illinois is always a strong region. I mean, they've always like flown under the radar in terms of like quote unquote hype, but they always have some of the best teams there and at Worlds. They're always ones that are helping those top teams the number one seed or stopping those top teams from getting to the number one seed uh, through qualification matches. So interesting to see what's going on there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next region. Sure. So Iowa is another state that we saw a lot of action in earlier on in the season. Uh, earlier on, we had a lot of action from teams like 7236 and uh, Recharge Green and, of course, 10435, uh, the circuit breakers. So uh, recently, we haven't seen too much action in Iowa. But we will see more action later on in the season with their league championships coming up soon. Um, moving on, we're going to go on to Ohio. Ohio is another region that has always had really crazy competitive teams. Um, this year, we saw, we've recently seen Brainstem. Uh, this is both the 83-93 um, Big Brainstem Robotics team and 6931, their sister team. Uh, we've also seen 12-835 Pixelated, 10464 Bionic Tigers, 11095 Loose Screws, and 8719 Quantum Leap. Uh, Bionic Tigers and Quantum Leap we saw earlier on in the season in Maryland. Um, and they also competed in Ohio, qualified for the Ohio State Championships. Um, we This uh, qualifier um, featured 8719. Uh, they were the winning alliance captain, and they won the Inspire Award. Um, and this past weekend, two really action-packed um, qualifiers went down in Ohio. Uh, there were teams like 4969 Robot X, 14320 The Antinote, uh, 12835 Pixelated, and both Brainstem Robotics teams from Pennsylvania. Um, at this Dayton qualifier, Robot X went undefeated, Pixelated won the Inspire Award, but both Brainstem teams got together uh, to win the Homing Valley qualifier, and they also got a really high score, and they won, and they got a new world record. Um, so right now we're seeing a match of Pixelated um, and few of really, other really, really strong teams competing at one of these Ohio qualifiers, um, which has been really, really successful so far. Uh, Ohio, we've seen, has always been a really competitive region, and we're seeing it again where the state championship is going to look really fun. Yeah, this is the match of the world record, I believe, of 8393 and their sister team, um, the Substantial Monospallic Brainstorm Robotics team, getting together and... Um, setting that world record so they're just getting a lot of stones on that platform and they're building two stacks which is something that's pretty interesting um yeah. i guess it allows them to not interfere with each other because they've got mm -hmm. like a sort of cycling back and forth and this is the first time that this match has been there so uh it's something that's really cool. yeah and so, and, yeah. and pixelated also you can see has a, a cool little lighting uh that like glows their number which i think is kind of a nice little detail on their robot yeah. Definitely. All right. All right. I really yeah. want to go back to the the brainstem uh, match. They they're both building two towers because since they can both stack really high independently, uh, it's nice to see that they're right off the bat going for two separate towers instead of building one super tall tower and then starting their next tower uh, right after that. So yeah. it's interesting to see how they're both uh, building two towers, and I wonder how that'll play in towards the world championship. I just want to point out one thing. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see when teams start. Uh once teams start working together. I like at the very end of the match how Brainstem just kind of lifts their lift up. as like I don't know if that's as far as they can, but that's really, really high, and I don't know if that was kind of a flexing moment, but it was just kind of funny uh, just seeing them do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah. So thank you all for all the follows and subscriptions we received today. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free, or if your parents have Amazon Prime, we hope uh, <laughs> for free, or if your parents have Amazon Prime. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. If you want to stay connected with Fun FTC is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Fun FTC, and join our Discord through the link in the chat. On behalf of myself, Jack, Ishan, 
and Ashray and our producer Tyler working behind the scenes, I would like to thank you for tuning in. Stay online for a couple of minutes as we transition to the Houston State's region recap. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.